Hello everyone. Today we are focusing on one of the most fundamental concepts in accounting, and that's the T account, the principles of debits and credits. Understanding these tools is important, crucial for recording and analyzing financial transactions. We will break down how T accounts work, how debits and credits flow through them, and how they are so important for keeping the books balanced. You cannot survive in an accounting course if you don't understand debits and credits. Simply put, you will fail the course if you don't understand how debits and credits work. I'm going to explain the concept and give you a mnemonic to remember to see how it works. We will need this information for the next session and for all future session, from journalizing to posting to lecture. To, to the general ledger. Journalizing is one of the most important things that we do. Journalizing is recording. That's what we do as accountant, we record. In order to record properly, you have to understand debits and credits. There's a T account, you have to make sure you are familiar with that T account. At the end of the session, we will work a multiple choice questions from farhatlectures.com. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. So let's start by physically inspecting a T account. A T account looks like a capital T. Notice here, it's a T account and it has two sides. This is one side and this is the second side. So it's shaped like a T account. That's, that's why it's called a T account. It has a, a account title, which is right here and this account title would take the place of an account like cash as an account what other accounts do we have supplies as an account and we talked about many accounts in the prior session accounts receivable as an account what else those are all assets liabilities accounts payable as an account unearned revenue revenues as an account expenses, so on and so forth. So each account will have a T account or a general ledger for that matter. It's a ledger account. That's basically what it is. And we're going to see that later. It has a left side and the left side is called the debit side. So on the exam, if you are asked, what does debit mean? Well, the definition of debit is the left side, physically the left side of the T account, which is the side here. It has a credit side, abbreviated CR. CR, what's credit? If you ask, what's the credit in an account? It's the right side. And remember what I mentioned in the introduction, right? Don't forget about this. Debit means left, credit means right. That's the first thing you need to know. Now we need to know how does a T account functions. Well, when we say we are debiting an account, when I say I'm debiting this account, it means I am inputting the number on the left side. That's what debiting. Guess what's crediting? Crediting means I am inputting the number on the credit side. If I'm debiting an account, it means the number is being placed on the left side. If I'm crediting an account, it means on the right. Debiting and crediting does not meet, does not means increase or decrease. The terms debit or credit alone do not indicate an increase or a decrease. Again, what's debit? Debit is left, credit is right. Now, then we have to figure out what's called the account balance. And that's important. The account balance is the difference between the debits and the credits. So you might have a thousand in debits, 300 in credits. The difference between them here is 700 and 700 is a debit balance. Why debit balance? Because we have more debits than credits. Well, it could be the opposite. It could be where we have 
uh, 1,000 in credits and 300 in debits. Here we have a balance of 700 credit. What I'm trying to say is for any particular account, you could have a debit balance or a credit balance. Now, which account will have a credit balance? Which account will have a debit balance? Just wait a minute. You're going to figure, figure this all out. So you're going to have a debit balance if the debits are greater than the credits. And certain accounts would always have a debit balance. And we're going to see that later. And the opposite is true. Certain accounts would always have a credit balance, which is which. Just hold on and you will see. Now, you'll have a zero balance if your total debits equal to your total credits. Now, although you have a zero balance for some accounts, that zero balance, you might have to put it on the debit or you might have to put the zero on the credit. Although it's zero, but you're going to see certain account will have a debit balance, certain account will have a credit balance, and you're going to see why in the next two minutes. The other thing we need to know about T account is in accounting, we have a double entry system. What is a double entry system? Double entry system means, simply put, for the accountant equation to stay in balance, at least two accounts are involved always and we talked about this when we analyzed a transaction at least two i didn't say only two at least two you could have three you could have four you could have 17 but you cannot have one account because if you have one account affected one account is changing the accountant equation will not stay in balance because you need some increase and some decrease or to increase let's let's look at the accountant equation assets equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. So some possible combination of things, let me go back here, some possible combination of things, we can increase asset and reduce asset. The accountant equation will stay in balance. So notice we could increase, but we need two accounts. We can increase assets and increase liability. The accountant equation will stay in balance. We could reduce liabilities and reduce assets. We can increase a liability and reduce a liability. This could happen. We can increase equity and increase asset. We can increase asset. Uh, there's possible combination. We can reduce asset and reduce equity. The point is you have to have at least two accounts are affected. And this is why I, I have here account one and account two. At least two accounts. Now, if we only have two accounts, if one is debited, being debited, the other one has to be credited. Why? Because each transaction, total debits equal to total credits. You have two accounts. One is going to be debit. If it's two, one will be a debit, one will be a credit. Now, you could have three, two debits, and one credits. But the amount is, the, is equal to each other. The two debits, when you add them up, they equal to the one credit. So the total debits equal to total credits. You could have more than two accounts. Now, for your purposes in financial accounting, most of the time, unless we have a compound entry, you're going to have two accounts. And that's why I told you, if you know cash is involved, start with cash. You figure out most of your problem. So, so far, so good. Now, we have not talked about when do we debit to increase an account, when do we credit to increase an account, so on and so forth. So now... This is the most important part of this lecture. How T accounts increase. Notice I did not say decrease. Because if you know how they increase, you know how they decrease. It's the other side. So I'm going to start with three accounts that they work the same way. Notice all assets, all expenses, all dividend. All assets. What are assets? Cash, prepaid, accounts receivable, land supplies, inventory, all assets, they increase by debiting them. They increase by debiting them. Now, do I have to mention that to decrease them, you credit them? No, just if they increase on the debit, well, I don't have to tell you on which side they gets reduced, right? Because come on, you should know this, right? The opposite side, okay? So assets, when I'm debiting an asset, when I say I'm debiting an asset, it means I am increasing an asset. Expenses. When, I'm, when I say I'm going to debit an expense, it means I'm increasing an expense. I'm going to make it easy for you for expenses for now. For now, you don't credit expenses. Are we going to credit expenses? Yes, there's one particular reason we're going to have to credit expenses, but I made it, I'm going to make it easy for you. If you know expense is involved, debit expense. Unless something else is happening, and if that something else is happening, I will 
you would know about that. I'm not going to mention it now. You will see it later. Dividend, the same thing. In dividend, dividend always increase. We don't reduce dividend. Are we going to reduce dividend? Yes. When? You will know when we get to it. Otherwise, for now, assets could go up. Assets could go down. Expenses always go up. Dividend always go up. And they go up. Let me put this on the debit side. I don't want to confuse anyone. They go up on the debit side. They go up on the debit side. Now, here's what I need to tell you. The side that the account increases on, the side that the account increases on, which is assets, expenses, and dividend, the debit side, is also called the normal side. So always, always, always for assets, we should have debits greater than credits. So we always have a, remember I told you, I'm going to tell you when we're going to have a debit balance and a credit balance. And this is, give me one second. Let me go back one more time. Okay, so debits are greater than credits for assets, expenses, and dividend. And as a result, we're going to have a normal balance of debit. Now, how about if debits equal to credits, you still put the zero under the side that the account increases on. So what's the normal balance of an account? The normal balance of an account is the side that this account increases on, which is the happens to be the debit. Now, this is confusing. Now, I'm going to tell you why those accounts work the same way. What's, what's common between asset expenses and dividend? But even if you don't know what these accounts, why these accounts work the same way, here's what I want you to remember. This is how you would remember this, actually. How would you remember this? You would say, I have three accounts, and those are dividend, dividend, notice here, dividend. Let me just my screen is acting up. Give me one second, please. Dividend, expenses, and assets. What, what about dividend, expenses, and asset? D, E, and A. Those accounts work the same way. What does the EA stand for? Drug, enforcement, uh, you can say administration or agency. I don't care if you like narcos, DEA. DEA accounts, if, if you have a DEA account and you want to increase it, you will debit. Okay, notice to make it easier, D for debit, D for dividend. Dividend expenses and asset work the same way. Now what's left? Because we have six types of accounts. What's left are liabilities, revenues, and common stock. And guess what? They work the opposite way. If you want to increase liabilities, you credit liabilities. If you want to increase revenues, you credit revenues. And matter of fact, we don't reduce revenues. Liabilities, if you want to decrease them, I don't have to tell you, you decrease them on the debit side. It just, as long as you know the side that it increases on, you should know the other side. Common stock, they increase on the credit, and I'm, gonna, I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna tell you, you are not going to reduce common stock. Are you? Yes, you will at some point when the company go out of business. You, you don't have to deal with this. Would revenue gets reduced? Yes. When? We'll talk about that later. So, the other way you can do it is take LRC and make an acronym and say those accounts, they increase on the credit any way you want to. I The way I, the way I learned it, DEA, debit increase, I'm good to go. And thank you, Narcos. I like that show. So, if you haven't watched it on Netflix, give it a chance. So those how T accounts work. Let me show you the T accounts in form of the accounting equation. Assets equal to liabilities plus equity. And this is another picture of the same thing. Now, remember revenues and expenses turns into retained earnings. Retained earnings is an equity account. So every time we hear the word equity, if we want to kind of make an equity account, equity account, equity increase on the credit, and gets reduced on the debit. So, common stock and revenues, they are they increase equity, while dividend and expenses, they reduce equity. And retained earnings, we hope that we have more revenues and expenses, it should be a credit. So the normal balance for retained earnings is a credit. Could you have a debit? Absolutely. If you have more expenses than revenues over the years, you will have a debit. What I just taught you right now is the fundamental pieces that you will need 
debits and credits for this course. So it's very important if you want to go back and view it. And the most important slide, in my opinion, is this slide here. You want practice, practice, practice until you get comfortable. First, you know your accounts. What type of account do I have? And when, how do I increase an account or reduce an account? Don't assume anything. Just work through this. If you want to print the slide or make a note of it, tattoo it on your hand, I really don't care how you do it. Just make sure you remember this until you get comfortable and this becomes a second nature to you if you're an accounting major or it should. Now, if you work in accounting, this is even a third nature, <laughs> right? But as a student, you need to be familiar with this. DEA will help. So this is a good cheat sheet. DEA, dividend, expenses, and asset. They increase on the debit. That's all what I have to know. And I will know the rest of my debits and credits. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. Which of the following correctly describe the normal balance of accounts receivable account? Hold on a second. First, I need to know what type of account is accounts receivable. To know the normal balance, you want to know the type of account. Why? Because once you know the type, you know on which side does it increase. Once you know on which side does it increase, you know whether it's a normal balance, debit or credit. Well, accounts receivable, the type of the account is an asset. And if we have an asset, on which side does it increase? On the debit. Therefore, the normal side is debit. Well, the answer is the normal side is the debit side because this is the side that assets increase on and accounts receivable is an asset. So it's a debit. So hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm going to quiz you on this one. So I want you to think about this. When as account receivable goes up and if we have two accounts are involved, can you know what other account will go up? And the answer is sales revenue or revenues. Because when you increase account receivable, it means you are saying, I performed the service for someone. And as a result, I generated my revenues, sales revenues, consulting revenue, some sort. Let me be more specific. It may not be sales. It could be some sort of a revenue. Let me put revenues instead, a generic term, revenues. My revenues will go up. Because if I'm increasing account receivable, I'm increasing my revenues. That's the reason I'm increasing my account receivable. The definition of account receivable is performing work on credit. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com. Work additional MCQs. Look at additional lectures. That's going to do what? That's going to help you in your financial accounting course and your accounting courses. Invest in yourself. Accounting is worth it. And good luck.